my vision of the film never made it to the screen because Edward Norton is passionate. Maybe a little too passionate. Ever since he burst onto the scene in the 90s, you know you're in for a solid performance from him, even if the movie itself falls a bit short. With Primal Fear, American History X, and Fight Club as some of his first films, it's surprising to see just how much his career has slowed down since, especially considering how much he puts into every role. But dig a bit deeper into the behind the scenes stuff and you get a clearer picture of how Norton walks that fine line between being passionate and a control freak. From creating a different cut of a film that made the director denounce Norton in a 35 page ad to getting kicked out of the MCU for not being very collaborative. It's said that Norton often comes to set with rewrites to whatever film he's in, but almost always his changes improve the film. So we wanted to take a look at all the times he was at his most passionate and controlling and how despite many people not wanting to work with him anymore, he still came out on top. Before diving into the controversial parts of his career, which happened early on, let's establish the origin of Norton's passion. Norton was born into an activism-oriented family, with his father being an environmental lawyer and his grandfather the founder of a nonprofit for developing homes and communities for the less fortunate. This way of life seeped into Norton, who, despite his busy acting career, spent a lot of time participating in environmental and human activism. I am the soil and was very vocal about his political views. The spark for his interest in acting came when he saw a musical at the age of five, leading him to try theater acting when he was eight. While theater initially ignited his passion, he very much enjoyed film, particularly the various aspects associated with it, such as the cinematography. Growing up, he found inspiration in actors like Robert De Niro and Dustin Hoffman because they weren't the most handsome guys, but still managed to make it in Hollywood, making him feel like he had a chance. Norton studied history and some Japanese at Yale, briefly worked for his grandfather's nonprofit in Japan before making the move to New York City to pursue acting. He dabbled in plays and even wrote some theater pieces before finally getting discovered in 1995. Out of over 2,000 people who auditioned, Norton was selected for a part in the film Primal Fear. Released in 1996, Norton portrayed an altar boy charged with the murder of a bishop, and he received a lot of praise for his performance. He even secured a Best Supporting Actor Oscar nomination, quite the accomplishment for your first feature film. That year, he starred in two more films, collaborating with heavyweight directors Milos Forman and Woody Allen, making it one of the best breakout years of any actor. However, it didn't take long for the success to get to his head and intensify his passion to another level. In 1998, Norton starred in American History X, where he played the leader of a violent white supremacist gang before being incarcerated for three years. It's crucial to note that Norton was hired as an actor for the film, and his passion for this project made him okay with taking a huge pay cut to get the role. Despite initial doubts from director Tony Kay, Norton's commitment proved invaluable, but I'm sure Kay later regretted not giving in to these doubts. In contrast to Norton's later films, where he sometimes took control of the script and could be challenging to work with on set, it was during the editing process where Norton really asserted himself. It was Kay's directorial debut, and he managed to produce a 95-minute cut of the film, which garnered positive reviews from test screenings. However, New Line Cinema, the production company, wanted some work to be done with the film. Norton joined Kay for this new cut, which proved to be a frustrating collaboration, escalating to the point where Kay punched a wall and required stitches. <laughs> Norton ended up making his own edits, added 18 minutes of footage, extended some of the emotional scenes, and made the film much more coherent. New Line liked Norton's cut much more, and they tried to get Kay on board with it, but Kay rejected the idea. After some arguing, Kay was given eight weeks to create a better cut, and despite claiming he had a new radical vision, Kay failed to deliver anything, prompting the studio to go with Norton's cut. He attempted to withdraw the film from the Toronto International Film Festival, remove or replace his name with Humpty Dumpty in the credits, and even filed a $200 million lawsuit against the Directors Guild and New Line Cinema, which was obviously dismissed. Before the film's release, Kay spent $100,000 on full-page ads in the Hollywood press, denouncing Norton as the producer. It was full of cryptic quotes by John Lennon and Abraham Lincoln. There's even a video of him ranting in public about the whole situation. Was permitted by the producers to edit and alter the film. Oh, and when he argued for a chance to make a new cut, he brought a priest, a monk, and a rabbi to the meeting with producers to help ease the negotiation. I know this is less of an Edward Norton control freak story and more of a Tony K is crazy kind of story, but it is a good example of how Norton took control for the good of the project. Because despite the chaotic production, Norton's efforts paid off. The film received great reviews and Norton earned a Best Actor Oscar nomination for his role. Kay even later admitted that his ego had interfered and took responsibility for the situation, but he wouldn't direct another film until 2006. 
Norton would then go on to star in these five films. Rounders was one of the rare instances where his performance was only okay. He was great in Fight Club despite the film flopping and it's one of the films he looks back on most fondly, especially because of his experience working with David Fincher, who always knew what he wanted to do and how to do it. Norton collaborated well on the script edits, assisted with casting choices, and shared a great time at the premiere with Brad Pitt, both so high they couldn't stop laughing. In 2000, he had his directorial debut with Keeping the Faith, which allowed him to release some of his controlling tendencies, though the film only received mediocre reviews. The score in 2001 had him starring alongside two of his idols, Robert De Niro and Marlon Brando. If there were any stories about Norton during this production, they were likely forgotten due to being in the shadow of Brando's on-set behavior. And in 2002, Norton had one of his most fun productions with Death to Smoochie, where he co-starred with Robin Williams and was directed by Danny DeVito. However, we then return to the more passionate side of Norton with 2002's Frida, where he rewrote the script multiple times even though he was only hired on as an actor. The film and its script were well received by critics in the cast, yet Norton received no writing credit. That same year, Norton starred as former FBI agent Will Graham in Red Dragon, the prequel to Silence of the Lambs. Norton frequently butted heads with director Brett Ratner over the script and the direction of some scenes. Ratner mentioned that, Edward's instinct is going to be, I have to take over this film. He's going to try to rescue the film. That's both a blessing and a curse. A familiar theme in Norton's career, which turned out to be a blessing in the past. Norton also brought a lot of his own rewrites to set, although there are conflicting accounts about whether the director welcomed them or not. His passion for every project he's involved with has been described as contagious. However, every writer and director has a vision for the film, and each has a different threshold for how much they'd allow an actor to sway them in a different direction, even if it's for the good of the film. Norton is often praised for this, but he has burned many bridges because of it. Even in cases where he lacks passion for a project like 2003's The Italian Job, he still delivers a great performance. He was one of the highlights of the film and his lack of passion is understandable because he was forced to star in the film to fulfill his three film deal with Paramount. However, he refused to promote the film and apparently wasn't the happiest person on set. These were the other films he starred in before he took part in his passion project that he later got screwed over with. In 2008, he starred as Bruce Banner in The Incredible Hulk, the second film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It was surprising to hear how passionate he actually was about this project. He signed on because he was a huge fan of the Hulk from the early comics and even the TV show starring Bill Bixby. Marvel enlisted Zack Penn to write the script for the film, and he submitted three drafts before Norton's hiring in 2007. While Penn was away promoting another film, Norton was in talks to secure the lead role. After discussing with Marvel and the director, Louis Leterrier, Norton got the part but was also signed on to rewrite parts of the film. He was obliged to submit a screenplay draft within a month, which he did, but continued to refine it until halfway through filming. He rewrote scenes every day and Leterrier appreciated all the changes as they added depth to Bruce Banner's character. However, not everyone was on board with Norton's enthusiasm for the film. Once Norton took over the script, Penn stepped back from the production but expressed dissatisfaction with Norton's attitude and how he wasn't happy with Norton coming to Comic-Con saying that he wrote the script. But the Writers Guild of America kept Penn as the sole writer of the film because Norton's changes weren't deemed substantial enough. If you watch some of the behind the scenes clips for this film, it's easy to see how passionate Norton was about it. The thought and effort he put in transcended his official contract where he even acted like a co-director at times. This was fine because it was a very collaborative experience and he didn't step on anyone's toes too much. However, once the film entered the editing phase, new problems arose. Both Norton and Leterrier wanted the film to have a runtime of 135 minutes, while the producers of the studio insisted on keeping it under two hours. Marvel didn't budge and they went ahead with the shorter cut. This conflict even became public with rumors of Norton saying that he wouldn't help promote the film if he didn't like the final product. Norton dismissed the rumors saying that people were just looking for a good story, but the promotional run was said to have been altered to include fewer interviews with Norton. He still attended the premiere and did other things to help promote it and the film released to okay reviews. However, years later, we'd find out that there was more to those rumors he dismissed. For 2012's The Avengers, Norton was replaced by Mark Ruffalo to play the Hulk. Kevin Feige stated that the decision wasn't based on monetary factors, but on wanting an actor who embodies the creativity and collaborative spirit of our other talented cast members, and who thrives working as part of an ensemble. Shots were fired at Norton's very controlling attitude. Norton didn't take kindly to those words and released a statement calling Feige's remarks unprofessional, disingenuous, and clearly defamatory. In 2014, Norton stated that he didn't want to play the Hulk again to give his career more diversity rather than just being associated with one character. It might be to save face, but he does seem a bit sad about the film in some of his newer interviews.
After The Incredible Hulk, his career really started to slow down. The difficulty of working with him became more and more public. In 2008's Pride and Glory, Nick Nolte was supposed to star alongside Norton until he dropped out due to chronic knee injury. He later admitted in his memoir that Norton's cocky attitude made him quit. He was replaced by John Voight, who also found Norton's controlling behavior challenging to work with. In 2014, he starred in Birdman, where he played a self-absorbed method actor that is very controlling and hard to work with. Sound familiar? People often joke that he's just playing himself in the film. However, he did receive a Best Supporting Actor Oscar nomination for this role. And other than his five appearances in Wes Anderson films, who you could say actually enjoys working with Norton, he only appeared in these few films. He's barely been a leading man in a film since Hulk, but there's more to it than people just not wanting to work with him. One reason was the film Motherless Brooklyn, another passion project of his, but this time it was entirely his own. Ever since he read the book it's based on in 1999, he's been wanting to make a film about it. It wasn't until 2012 when he finished the script, but he didn't know who would be directing it. In 2014, he announced that he would be directing and starring in the film, getting some help from Red Dragon's director Brett Ratner, with whom he had butted heads with before. Sadly, the film only received okay reviews and was a box office flop, with praise as usual going to Norton's performance. When finally given the chance to truly take control of something he was passionate about without stepping on anyone's toes, it ended in disappointment. But we're not going to end on a sad note because Norton has actually been doing very well ever since he played Hulk. He got married in 2012 and had a son in 2013. He indulged in his activist roots by setting up many fundraisers to help with the financial crisis, protecting African ecosystems, and even launched a platform, CrowdRise, that helps raise donations for charities. It was eventually acquired by GoFundMe. There is so much more to his life than just being a celebrity or some Hollywood A-lister. In fact, he always despised the idea. He just wanted to continue living a normal life while acting. He's satisfied with his career so far and has always respected actors who carefully select roles rather than just taking on as much as they can. He feels his career is already accomplished, starring in a handful of films that offer something much more than just casual entertainment. It was these types of films that initially gave him the passion for acting. Now, some people might suggest he's probably bitter about missing out on the cash cow that is the MCU, but a quick Google search of his net worth shows that he's worth $300 million. That was the other thing that he's been busy with, making big money moves. He's a very smart investor, something he's also passionate about, just like his activism and acting. So there you have it. Edward Norton's most passionate moments. What do you think of his career? Do you think he was a bit too controlling in these stories? Share your thoughts below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and check out our Patreon for some cool perks. But until next time, have a good one.